Hey friends, welcome back. I'm Matt, and thank you for stopping by the channel. Now I've got a really cool pattern for you today. This one's called the White Moth. I know, kind of a boring name, but I mean, that's exactly what it is. It's a, a white fly that looks kind of like a moth. Now it's number 38 in our Great Smoky Mountain series, also from Don Kirk's Hatches and Fly Patterns of the Great Smoky Mountains. So what's the history on this thing? Well, we don't really know. It's uh, at least 75 years old, came out of Western North Carolina, and that's about all we know of the fly, but it's a great pattern. It's a high floater, it's very highly visible. It works great for us old folks who have a hard time seeing things in, at dusk. Now, there is one unique component to this fly. The original recipe calls for mink fur. And I mentioned a couple weeks ago that I didn't have any mink fur, and Lee Mowers from Oklahoma emailed me and said, hey, I've got plenty of patches of mink. Would you like me to send you some? <laughs> I said, absolutely, please do. And Lee did. I got a package two nights ago from Oklahoma, a Ziploc bag full of, you know, about a dozen patches of various mink fur. You know, and apparently a mink is kind of like a rabbit. They come in all different colors. So I had some brown, some fairly dark stuff, and then some medium brown and some sable colored, and then this light color right here. So this is a buff, kind of a, a tannish. Um, this is what I used tonight. So it, it looks a little tan, but if you get in the under fur and then pull out the guard hairs, it's a very, very light colored dubbing. Now, if you don't have mink, and I know a lot of you probably don't, just use rabbit. Use some white rabbit or some light creamish rabbit. And if you don't have that, just use synthetic. Uh, use whatever you use for your standard dry flies. So it's a pretty cool pattern. I think you're gonna like it. Let's give it a shot. So there you go. The white moth, pretty simple tie can be tied as big as a 10, probably as small as an 18. This is a size 12, standard length dry fly hook. And I am using white thread. It's a 70 denier UTC. I'll lay a base down all the way to the start of the bend. Now, after you've got your base down, Go ahead and take your thread back up here to where we're going to catch in the wings. So maybe a third of the way back. And the wings on this guy, just two tips of white hackle. So this is a rooster hackle. I'm gonna tie them in with the tips pointing forward. I think it just gives you a little bit more room to work with. So I'm gonna catch them in where my thread is hanging. That's where we're gonna post them up. So I'll do couple of wraps right there and then kind of stand them upright see if that's the length you want and that is about the length I want so I'll go ahead and a few more wraps to secure them back here and we'll go ahead and snip this off and I'm going to work on standing these up well let's let's bury these these butt ends before we do that but get your thread back up to the base of where you tied those in and then let's just lift them up and put a few wraps in front of it, however many it's gonna to take to stand them up perpendicular. Now's the time if you wanna put some X wraps, some figure eights in between them to keep them apart. That's probably when you should do this. I haven't been and they've been staying apart just fine. So let's go ahead and, and snip off this excess right there. It would probably be hidden with our hackle, but why not? Okay, now take your thread back, back to where we're gonna tie in the tail. Now, the original called for deer body hair, white deer body hair for the tail, but even the finest hair I had was still a little bit too hollow and it kind of flared out on me. So I've been tying it with just white strung saddle hackle, which I think looks better, and it's a light enough fly that it will still hold it up. So let's take two wraps here, make this tail about a body length. Okay, that's gonna be fine right there. I'm securing it with a good couple of wraps right there. But what I will do while I'm still back here is put a wrap underneath this tail. You wanna prop it up just a little bit and that the hackle we're gonna wrap will push it back down. So. What I'm trying to avoid is this tail pointing too far down. So after you've got a couple of securing wraps right there, let's just try to get in here and snip off this excess. Okay, that's gonna be fine right there. 
might want to bury this little area in between the, the base of those wings and that tail. Not a big deal because we've got a pretty fuzzy body we're going to put on it. So let's tie in our rib next. I'm using brass, copper wire actually, and a size small. So it's a UTC and a size small. Now watch this, I'm not going to take it all the way back because I'm going to put one wrap of dubbing behind the wire. So let's go ahead and bury that rest of that wire in. Watch the point of your hook. It will mess up your thread when you keep hitting that. So let's put a little wax on our thread. Now it's time for the mink. And what I like to do with this mink, this is a great patch. So this is a little bit off color, but toward the base, it is certainly more white. So what I'll do, I will just grab a pinch of it and snip it till we got a, a big chunk like this. And notice this, you still got a lot of guard hairs in there, so you're gonna to need to pull as many of these out as you can until you just have the under fur. So when you've got just the under fur, say maybe a, a little pinch like that, just mix it with your fingers until you get, you know, what looks like a little dubbing mix. And I've still got a couple of guard hairs in there. I don't know if you can see them, but I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it. And if, if they stick out when we're making our, after we've made our body, oh well, we can trim them. So it's not a big body. You can tell it's just gonna be from the tail there up to the base of that wing. So on this size 12, probably a two inch noodle will be enough. And this dubs on about like rabbit. So let's, let's take a couple of wraps to get back behind that wire. So now we've got one full wrap behind that wire. I might tighten my noodle up just a little bit and then just finish your body all the way up to that wing. Okay, that looks fine. It's a little bit fuzzy up there at the front. Now let's wrap this rib. Not too close together, but fairly tight. It's not really for looks, just kind of to give it a little bit more durability. And you're not really adding any significant weight. Okay, now let's catch this off up here, right in front of the, the wings. I'll put a little tension on my thread just to pull that hook down and before I spin it off. Now we can just yeah, bury that a little bit more right there. Our wings are going to be fine. Now white hackle, white dry fly hackle, size to match the hook. I'm going to use this right here, which these first couple wraps are going to put down some long fibers. I'm going to catch it in with two or three in front of it. And then maybe one thread wrap behind it. Let's do two. Okay. Now watch your wings. If you mess your wings up, you can kind of arrange them when you're wrapping the hackle. So don't, don't lose any sleep over that. Take my thread back up here and we'll snip off this excess of this feather right here. Now we can wrap this hackle. And I'm going to try to wrap it. I've got about four inches. I'm gonna to try to wrap it without my hackle pliers. Two or three behind the wings, and then probably two up in front of it. Should give you enough hackle. It depends on, on the quality of the feather you're using. So I think that's gonna be enough behind it. I'm gonna pull these up forward. And let's see what two up here will look like. So I'm using this, this wrap, wrapping this hackle to try to help position these wings. I just want them still coming off the top and a little bit separate. Okay, that is gonna be enough hackle wraps right there. I wasn't really counting, but I think I got three behind it and two in front. So let's lock this in. 
and we're gonna have a little bit of cleanup, but it's not gonna be too bad. So let's snip off this excess right here. And then just try to clean up this head. Push all these back. Take my thread right back behind the eye and then build a little ramp back. I don't want to go too far back, but I want to push them back far enough where I can get a, a good whip finish in here. And this is 70 denier thread, so I'm not worried about building up too big of a head right here. I do want enough that it's going to be white. You know, this white is a little bit translucent when you get it wet, so. I think that's going to work right there. Got a little mess on my thread. We'll do a, I'll say four turns right here. Should be plenty. With our drop of head cement, and snip off this thread right there. And those wings don't look too bad. They're coming off the, the top eh, a little bit close together, but I think we're fine with that. So that's it, my friends, the white moth. Pretty cool pattern, great pattern for us old folks fishing late in the evening. So I appreciate you watching, take care, and we'll see you next time.